Boy chummers, before we get started, if you enjoy our content, do us a favor and give it a like if you're on YouTube or rate the episode if you're listening on any one of the audio platforms. Though those interactions go a long way in helping us reach new people who are interested in the Shadowrun universe and its lore. It could also help us get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers on YouTube this season, but we greatly appreciate it and we can't do it without your help. Last time on Sinless, we had everybody come back together and start to share information very terribly. It, it wasn't great. The, it was getting thrown this way and that way and, and everything. Uh, some decisions were eventually made and they were able to kind of formulate a plan together and we'll see how they act on that later on but before we get started this evening a quick word from our sponsor drive through rpg whatever game you play around your table drive through rpg has you covered core books for every tabletop role-playing game that you've heard of and some that you have it also a bunch of supplements modules and everything else under the sun for these core settings can be found on Drive Through RPG. Just use our affiliate link you can find down in the description below. And before you check out, not only will you get the products that you need to make your adventures great, but you will support us in the process. We greatly appreciate it. So, on to the episode for tonight. Uh, we are here with just just Kaze. <laughs> Last time you saw him, he was running through the streets trying to help his mortally wounded friend. And he ran into the arms of Ren Raku security surrounding the Arcology. His two friends left, but he stayed behind to catch up on some things. That's That's where we're at for this evening, right? Yeah, that checks out. <laughs> you were told to wait while uh, your two uh, VIP members were going to be entering. Mm -hmm. So uh, Applejax is still passed out recovering on the table. Uh, it's just going to be uh, a few hours of waiting, is there anything that you want to do inside the medical tent? It's a good question. Um, did they happen to leave like a like a patient note or like a clipboard thing that like says what was wrong with him or like like an examination form or anything? Like, uh, yeah, he has a he has a patient, uh, like a, a patient chart. Yeah, I I want to check I want to check the chart. Okay, are you looking for anything in particular? Uh, I just want to see if there's information on like what they like what was wrong with him when we brought him in. Oh, and and if there is any other like notes of like maybe weird notes if there was any like lingering things or anything else that they found while while working on it. Uh, uh so you'll note in the. Uh, the patient chart notes that there's a lot of references to lacerations, some punctures, uh, nothing along his neckline. Uh, all of this was across his chest. Uh, he had puncture marks into his abdomen that looked like doctor's notes, um, fingers or claws mm -hmm. stabbed mm -hmm. into him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also uh, very badly beaten uh, across the face. He has some cracked ribs. Um, good old hairline fracture on his jaw. Yeah, he's he's not doing well. He's, he's very beat up. Yeah. There's no foreign objects found in his system. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have any extra limbs that are hidden inside or extra organs. So That's good. So if there's no no extra organs, meaning that they probably didn't use them for storage, so no tracking device probably not. should be good. Unless they took a lot of his blood. Well, unless they're using blood magic, but yeah, it's 
All we easy at this point. We just uh, we just attached the asterisk of unless they're using blood magic to pretty much any statement that we say in this game at this point, man. So just it's only happened like a couple times. Yeah, and we've only done it once. Yeah, with Sam Hickory for the purposes of you know getting what we needed. <laughs> poor, poor Sam. Is he? Is he though? <laughs> Ah, you know what? He's had a rough life. We'll just say that, especially after meeting you guys. And how much of that is self-wrought, all right? How much of that are we responsible for? Well, you'd have to go back and get him to find out, so. Uh, that's too much work. Uh, we're, 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 we're kind of already in the middle of something here. So, okay. So, I mean, outside of, like, the actual just straight injury reports of what, what I would say would be the obvious uh, injuries to him. Mm -hmm. that's most of yeah that's, that's, most that's of like really the only thing that's on there it's all you're really working with yeah if, i mean if i just do like a quick look around in the tent is there anything weird Else going or... on um yeah 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 there's a, a lot of other people that are laid up in uh like these hospital beds or these mm -hmm. makeshift recovery areas mm -hmm. uh some of them look like they've definitely been through some kind of meat grinder or something like that. There's cuts, there's abrasions, some of them have burns. Uh, there's uh, an individual that has to have the lower portion of his leg removed due to frostbite. Uh, there's also a bunch of variously strange wounds on people as well. Uh-huh. Like small cuts or abrasions that you wouldn't think would normally cause somebody to have to be in a hospital triage bed, but mm. there they are mm. for some reason. Gotcha. Uh, you'll also notice that some of them uh, have the familiar marking of being one of the Red Samurai. Okay. Not all of them, but some of them do. And, mm -hmm. I mean, normally, you've always been told that these guys are, like, the best of the best. That's what every corporation wants you to believe about their uh, private security force, right? Well, they're supposed to be <laughs> Renraku special forces, so yeah. you would think that they would be really good. So why are some of them laid up in here? N not a very reassuring prospect. But yeah, doctors running here and there. Um, there's also one area that has been completely cordoned off in the tent. There are two guards outside of, and it's actually like a containment structure. Mm -hmm. So it's like a tent, but then there's this pod that's been placed inside. It almost looks like a, like a small cubicle mm -hmm. with a security door on the front of it. And it has two fully armored red samurai that are standing guard around it. But you can see on the outside, it looks like that it's taking like life signs, like tracking heart rate and things like that. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll walk up to the red samurai on guard. Or All just, right. They just kind of ignore you just, as you get closer to them. I'll just kind of do like a, like a lean, like I'm trying to look into the tent. Just so, so, uh, what's, What's going on in there? Nothing you need to worry about. It's being taken care of. I don't know. I got a friend of mine here that's in uh, pretty bad shape, and I want to make sure that if there's anything else dangerous in this tent that could, you know, be possibly problematic, I just uh, want to get a read on the situation. Again, sir, there's nothing to worry about. This is under full lockdown containment. But if there's nothing for me to worry about, then why can't you just tell me what it is? That doesn't seem like it makes very much sense. You don't have the clearance, sir. I don't have the clearance. I don't. No. I. That's surprising to me. Uh, okay, interesting. Who would have clearance, just hypothetically speaking? By you asking, that just goes to show that you have no idea. <laughs> Why don't you move along? You clearly don't need to be here. 
Oh, okay. Well, hey, fair enough. You know, I just, uh, you guys seem like you're uh, doing the best you can. You know, again, not very reassured due to the other red samurai that I see laying up here in the triage. But, you know, you guys keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I'm assuming that you're doing it well. I'll just walk just kind of scowls at you when you say that. <laughs> All right, I'll walk out. Or walk back over to Apple Jacks, I should say. Okay. Just gonna wait over there with him. Mm -hmm. He's kind of just passed out for a while. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm waiting in the tent. I don't really want to. So uh, eventually while you're waiting there, uh, some corporate suit looking guy is going to come up and approach you. Mm -hmm. And just kind of tap you on the shoulder. Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, I'll say that I was like I was, I was taking like a little you know taking my siesta as as it were. Uh, you are being uh, cordially summoned. Mm. If you could please follow me, sir. Sounds good. I'll get up to follow him. Sure. So he'll lead you out of the medical tent uh, through kind of a staging area where you can see there's. UCOS military uh, and Red Samurai that are kind of very close proximity to one another. And you're led through this kind of parade ground. You've got, you see guys that are doing PT out here. Uh, and you're led to a another kind of makeshift command center. This one's not, this, this one isn't a tent, mm -hmm. more or less a, an actual quick build structure that they put up no oh, okay more of just like a straight pop-up yeah type of thing okay yeah uh, and you'll be uh ushered in through the door and brought into kind of a a, a meeting room mm -hmm. it's nice it's decent sized table there's some electronics equipment that lines one of the walls there's kind of a big screen or projector behind you or behind on one of the back walls. And then you just asked the guy that leads you in, just please, please wait here. And then he leaves. A few minutes later, the door opens up and you'll see a familiar grizzled face. That of your original instructor he just kind of walks in, looks at you. Gives you a slight bow and goes to sit directly across from you. Yep. Uh, stand up, bow back, and we'll sit back down at the table. I don't want to insult you right from the beginning, so what is it that you are calling yourself these days? Uh, as it is currently, uh, I go by the name Kaze. Of course. Well, Kaze, I cannot deny that it is good to see you again. He was well, Master. You seem to be keeping yourself uh, in good shape and spirits by the looks of things, which is always nice to hear. If you remember anything that I taught you, it is always important to remain ready. Always you ready. Did, you did not think that we would be seeing you again. What with your grand exit? You know, situations being what they were, I also didn't expect that. Um, but... Uh, dear friend of mine uh, was in very bad shape and this was the only option that I had available and uh, by doing so I've found myself back in the fold it seems well I wouldn't necessarily say that you're fully back but it does make sense your story you were one to defend your comrades It is good to hear that you have made friends. 
quite a few actually uh it's been nice to be myself and be able to rely on other people because i can trust them and not because they can do something for me uh, as you know i've always kind of had an issue with the corporate structure system shall we say of uh how other individuals handle their business and so um the rigidness you mean mm, mm -hmm. that's a that is a, a good way to put it uh so it's been nice and uh, i've met a lot of interesting people along the way uh, as well as some people that i happen to care about quite deeply i'm glad that you have found your way in life and that it is your way everybody should be so lucky <sighs> if only However, you know there is one person that will not see it that way. Yeah, I kind of figured that would be the case. Otherwise, I wouldn't still be here, I'm assuming. Well, I will uh, put the meeting off for as long as possible, but eventually the two of you will need to talk. Yeah, I kind of figured that that would be the case. Um, uh, Prior to that, there was a little bit of information that I was hoping uh, that you might be able to assist me with, um, just to kind of try to get a bigger feel for what's going on here. Um, so, first question being, uh, what's up with the quarantined area of the triage tent back there? A uh, couple of unsavory gentlemen guarding out front of it that uh didn't seem to give me any didn't want to give me any, any information because they said that my clearance level wasn't high enough and i feel like we both know that that's definitely not the case but i didn't feel like making a whole thing out of it so well when you have been away for as long as you have things change understandably so obviously your security privileges have been diminished mm mm-hmm Thanks to your mother. There was protest. I will at least have you know that. Well, I'm glad that there are still a couple of people inside that uh, have a higher opinion of me. However, uh, more more that they are hoping that you will come back. Mm, this I is see. only going to give them more of that hope. What you have done recently. Yeah, that's uh, you know. Uh, let people hope. I see no reason to rain on that parade. Uh, well, as you know, and as I've tried to instill in you, all actions have consequences or repercussions. This one notwithstanding. Uh, that would seem to be why I'm sitting here at this table across from you right now. Uh, as for the matter of the special security area mm -hmm. that is for a prisoner oh I see yes what kind of prisoner I don't know how much you know about what is going on here but I can fathom that it is nowhere near close to the reality only what the trids are telling man i uh have not really kept up uh in terms of the inner machinations of the company shall we say uh in quite a while so i only know what the trids have told me and i i'm starting to suspect judging by the amount of fo forces that i've seen out here on the way over that that is not the full story it is much darker. Well, whatever you're comfortable with sharing, uh, I am open to listen to. It was a grave mistake on our behalf is why we are so involved. Hmm, I see. Something that cannot be allowed to get out. 
makes sense given the amount of precautions that are put in here. I just don't understand what could have gone wrong. I always just assumed that from the way that they used to talk about it and back in the day that the arcology was just some type of vanity project to put a nice big stamp in the middle of the downtown metroplex. You don't make a city within a city without being creative. And unfortunately, it seems that our computer systems took that creation a bit far. Ah. Now there is something that is in control. And not someone. Uh, no. I see. It has been very difficult to get further information out of there. Anything else that anyone would be privy to, you know who you would have to talk to. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like that has gone a long way into filling in some of the blanks here that I was uh, trying to piece together at the very least. But looping back around to the initial question that we started off with here. What kind of prisoners being held in the triage tent right now? I will leave that for you to discover. It may be sooner than you think. Before anything else, we are not without our amenities here, and I can offer you a taste of whole. Should you be so inclined. Would be rude of me to decline after all this time. Uh, he'll hit a button on the belt that he has, and an attendant will come in. Uh, and you do you speak fluent Japanese, or do you have to have a chip? Uh, let me check. I don't remember. I think I have a chip for Japanese. Uh, I have a. Level four Linguisoft for uh, Japanese. Okay, so, well, <laughs> we go. So, uh, does my character speak Japanese? Not natively, but he's but he speaks Spanish, all right. And oh I know that boy, that, I know that that's what you were worried about. Yes, that's for this. That's exactly what I was worried about. You know, out out, out of a let's just say out of a safety precaution, while I was in the tent with uh, waiting. I definitely would have had put in the Linguisoft chip for Japanese preemptively. I don't, I just I had this feeling that like was probably going to be helpful here. <laughs> just maybe. Just maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, then you'll you'll hear him that he's uh, dictating an order to the attendant that stepped in for food and drink. Okay. Uh, then he sends him off, and so. Tell me about your adventures. What have you been busying yourself with? Quite a bit, as it turns out. Um, let's see. Where to start? Um, well, uh, I have a oh, I have a go gang now, so that's fun. Um, I've been uh, they've been helping me to monitor and maintain the Redmond Barons as best as we can. Uh, in a bit of a gang war situation, um, allegedly. Still looking into that. Not 100% sure on the authenticity of that in the current moment. Um, but then after that, I made friends uh, with a group of runners that I've been spending most of my time with. Uh, we went to Europe because uh, it turns out that uh, one of them was actually a super assassin whose uh, dad controlled a evil assassination empire. So... Running through there was a good time. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I took over the running of Nova Hot, uh, which was going very well until that was burned to the ground into the potential aforementioned gang war that I had brought up. Um, and then uh, currently, uh, me and my other runner acquaintances are kind of like the watchers of the barons right now like you know we're kind of just doing the best that we can and 
trying to help out uh where applicable and uh yeah it's been a it's been an interesting go so far um on that actually that's i i appreciate you bringing that up because that's also given me another thing to think of here um what happened with sue that's something else that uh you will have to be informed on i see well uh just just so you know uh huh <laughs> she volunteered so hold no grudge or ill will towards your superiors thinking that she was forced I mean, knowing Sue, I don't think that they could have forced her to do anything that she didn't want to do in the first place anyway, so I kind of assumed that that would have been the point, and I did see her the night that she left, which was when I had taken over Novahot in her absence, and uh, had kind of gotten that assumption, because uh, if it was a little bit more serious than that, I feel like I wouldn't have known that they took her until I went to go see her again and she just wasn't there. So it kind of did feel like everything was of her own machinations. To my knowledge and understanding, she is still alive. That is probably the first positive update since I've been here. So uh, I'll take I'll take that as a win. Um, and uh, I'm assuming get some more information on that as time dictates. But uh, that's been my uh, adventures and fun ships. What have you been up to? How's, uh... Oh, much the same. Helping to train new batches of recruits. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing with the high-level bodyguard that I am assigned. Mm -hmm. Occasionally making it to my garden. Oh, that's good. But obviously I have been called away for this situation. I have a feeling that most of Ren Rock has been called away for this situation at this point. Not as much as you would think, but enough to show a presence and interest. We will see what comes of this too. Uh, then your food's going to be wheeled in. You have your, your choice of some excellent sushi dishes, uh, a noodle bowl, some warm sake. And he just kind of tells you what he's been doing, keeping up with things. Nothing, nothing super crazy. And then uh, this lovely get together is interrupted by the door flying open. Uh, four red samurai troops strutting in, followed by a woman in the Trey Chic corporate outfit, who you can instantly recognize as her eyes seem to narrow in your direction as you get this icy stare directed at you as she goes to sit uh, on the opposite side of you next to your sensei. Yes, as she walks in, I will stand out of the chair and bow in the direction. Uh, it's good to see that this hedonistic place that you've chosen to live hasn't completely ruined you. And she'll slightly bow and then sit in the chair and then gesture for you to sit as she gestures for me to sit i turn towards the other four red samurai and i just go high fives anybody high fives Hi. nobody nobody moves no why your guys is lost i'm pretty good at high fives i'll just sit back down in the chair yes your attempts at humor once more where did i go wrong Always nice to see you too, Mom. Yes, it's been quite some time. I thought we would never have to cross paths ever again. I had my fingers crossed, but here we are at the table. You chose to do this. So, you are here now. 
We have taken in your friend. We have cared for him. He should be on the road to recovery. I can see also in our report that uh, the one that was sent here to watch after you is now stuck inside the building. Unfortunate. Isn't it just? Perhaps. But you're here now. Maybe there is something that you can do for us. Mm, mm -hmm. With your unique skills. That's what you always told me. Hmm. And maybe if you had listened to me, it would have gotten you somewhere better in life. I mean, if better in life is selling out into the corpo suit that, uh, should I say, shoddily made corpo suit that you're wearing at the table right now. I don't need I th to hear your baseless insults as usual. Uh, if they were baseless, then I would understand and agree with you. But ju just judging by the inner hemline that you have on that top, as well as how unflattering the waistline is on your bottoms that I noticed when you walked in. You're you not still, You still aren't making tailor. enough money to be able to buy taste, and that's unfortunate. Well, isn't it lovely that you're here? But it now, sounds like I'm going to have my hands so full, I wish I could just do something for you on that suit, but what is it that you are really wanting out of me? Tosses uh, a data pad over to you. Hmm. The information that you will pertinently need is stored on there. You can look over it at your leisure. For our continued support and help for your friend, I thought perhaps you would do us this favor. You wouldn't want a tragically wounded civilian to be caught up trying to sneak into the Arcology, would you? That would be a real unfortunate scenario, I'd imagine, for that person. Yes, they would then have to be turned over to the Yukos military. And who knows what would happen to them then, especially if they're one of the sinless. Would be a real unfortunate set of circumstances there. And you know, it's just, it's just always been so hard for you to be able to just ask me for something instead of having to threaten me. I like to have my bargaining chips available beforehand. Hmm. Maybe that's something you would have learned had you stayed. I've found that a lot more times you're able to get people to help you uh, without needing to hold bargaining chips over their heads in the first place. And I don't know, building a respectful and mutual relationship with that person, but mm. that's well, something that I had to learn after leaving, obviously. Then, then this information will also help. Not only is your poor wounded compatriot in our care currently on his road to rehabilitation but the one that was sent here to watch you that you seem to have formed some bond over is also trapped inside and of course I could only imagine that you'd want to see her again maybe even rescue her what would you say to that after she asked that Kaze kind of sitting at the table just kind of puts his he does like a goes for the eye rub and then just as he moves his hands back away from his face his eyes just go super dead and like non-responsive in emotion and just goes well what I would have to say to that is I need you to stop reminding me of the situation with my friend in the triage tent because obviously if it wasn't for that in the first place I would have never been back here. We wouldn't be sitting at this table and I would not be looking you in the face, which was how it was supposed to be in the first place. The second thing is knowing that Sue left voluntarily. I have no doubt in my mind that there's a reason that you recalled her in the first place in an attempt to get back at me, which is again, reason number two why I'm sitting at this table across from you right now. The third thing is going to be that I am going to do what I can for my friends, a concept that I know that you know nothing about, given the fact that nobody told you that your makeup looks terrible coming into this tent right now. But all of that aside, I'm going to help these people because they're people that I care about, and this has absolutely nothing to do with you, the corp, or any other attachments. And as soon as this job and operation is done, 
you are once again out of my life until I decide otherwise. Something we can agree on. Soon as you're able to fulfill this little infiltration and recovery, you and your friend are free to leave. I've given you all the information. Look over it at your leisure. I have somewhere else more important to be. So just get up and walk out and the four guards will fall in line behind and exit. As she's walking out, I just say, by the way, try flats over heels. Just just a brief stop at the doorway. There's a consideration of some kind and then she just keeps walking. The sensei is over there just... I, I look over at him and just go, you know, all things considered, I think that went rather well. I feel like there's something I should teach you here about breathing down the dragon's neck or something. I, I You know, the metaphor is completely lost on me right now. When the two of you get in a room, it feels like there's a storm. Well, what I can say is one of the beneficial things that you did teach me. Uh, uh, I should say one of the many beneficial things that you did teach me in our time together was uh, show respect where respect is shown. And I know where I fall on the totem pole every time that we're in a room together. So not much that I can do with that uh, in this current situation, unfortunately. I understand. Eventually, one day, perhaps you two can come to some kind of understanding and bridge the gap. I know it's something distant for me to be hopeful of, but I can still hope for it. Well, why don't you go ahead and keep your fingers crossed on that one for me, buddy? Because I uh, I got to use these hands for other intentions. I'll and as I say not... that, I'll pick up the tablet off the table and start reading through the information on it. I'll leave you to it. If you need me at all, just ask someone. They will come find me. I do have something that you that uh, I could be uh, that could be of use. And so I'll take the tablet and tuck it away into, into my pocket for now. Mm-hmm. And then I want to walk back with him to the triage tent. Okay. <laughs> and then as, as we get back to the tent, I'm going to walk up to the guards with him and just be like, so what's his clearance level? Is is this okay? Is this, I they immediately like stiffen up in, in oh. uh, their posture and stance when you come back with, <laughs> with your sensei and they'll immediately stand to, they're, they're a little bit more formal than they were last time that I spoke with them. It's weird. I don't know what happens. It seems as though they've maybe loosened up a bit. Guys, come on. It's all right. Like I told you, you don't got to be so strict all the time, you know? Completely rigid. And uh, your sensei kind of pulls you to the side. I know you're just having your fun. I do appreciate it sometimes. Read over what you have and then we'll we'll talk more. In the meantime, I'll get things together for you. I also brought him here because I wanted to use him as a way to get no. into the tent. So we, okay, yeah, yeah. He points so, to the tablet. Everything that you need will be on there. And then should we have to come back here, we will. I Read over it first to be prepared. Gotcha. Will do. I and, recommend not going in there blind. I see. And then uh, as he uh, as he's walking away, I, I lean into one of the Red Samurai goes, and I just go, I would tell you who I am, but that's above your clearance level. Wow. And then I'll I'll go back to the seat next to uh next to Apple Jacks and start reading through the tablet. Sure. Uh it's kind of a quick summary of um the arcology defenses and how any kind of attempt to ingress has been repelled numerous times. Uh there have been attacks that have come out that have pushed out of the arcology and attacked the forces that have been out here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Didn't really do major damage, but it did allow them to capture prisoners or have people to interrogate. Supposedly, that's who they have locked up, is one of those types that tried to push out in an attack Mm -hmm. on the forces out here. Uh, It also details the little bit of what you can know from Sue's mission where she was somehow able to get inside the arcology with a small team and they were making their way through to 
contact the resistance that is inside and try and ascertain the full level of damage and what was going on and who was behind things. And they don't know if her team made it to the resistance or not. Uh, any kind of vital signs that they might periodically receive show that she's still alive, but they're intermittent at best. Uh, the rest of the team that has gone in, there may be one other survivor, uh, but the full team of six is only Sue and that one other person. All rest of them, all the rest of them are flatlined. They're gone. Uh, the briefing is that you would pick up on the remnants of Sue's mission to try to find a way in. She was clever enough to build something into the body armor of the Red Samurai to help infiltrate through the sensors. That's how they originally got in. That's why she was called back in. So they can't let her fall into enemy hands. Because if she does, then that technology could be leaked to them and then they could find a way around it. So they can't let that happen. Okay. So they're asking for your unique outside of the box skills that uh, runners of the shadows are known for. <laughs> and if you would lead a team in to one, try and recover Sue and make contact with the resistance, and two, if possible, uh, recover one of their high-value individuals that is supposed to be in the care of the resistance inside. And there's a full dossier on this individual. He's some kind of computer technician. Uh, does, it, does it have a name? His name is Murata Goro. Okay. Did you say Murata? Yeah, Murata. Okay, M O R A D A. Mm -hmm. The resistance is the people that are still alive within the arcology, right? They're referred to as the resistance. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And apparently, they have a survivor from the last group that tried to push out from there that attacked them. And there's your high value uh, individual that you could. Uh, possibly talk to all right so uh is there any information in the dossier in regards to what's expected to be in the arcology like enemy wise like any type of uh you know helpful information like that before we go in uh yes apparently there are individuals that are working with quotations the enemy uh-huh. Uh, -huh. uh and they're sometimes difficult to pick out. Uh-huh. The easiest way to discern them, apparently, is on their right arm. Uh -huh. On their upper arms, they will have black bands that go around their arms that look like tattoos. Should you run into an individual that has a black band around their arm? Consider them hostile. I see. Okay. No matter what they say to you. It has that has that in quotations. Upper right specifically. Yeah, it's, like, no. it's like always on this arm. Yeah. Okay. Upper portion of this arm. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, you'll be able to identify the resistance as most of them that you encounter will walk around sleepless to show their arms. Anyone that has any kind of covering or is wearing full covering body armor, treat them as hostile until proven otherwise. Also, uh, not all floor plans can be counted upon, as apparently there has been some construction done and is still ongoing to some of these floors that makes them difficult to traverse. I uh, see. I was wondering if uh, the AI had figured out the shoot the glass moment. You know. uh, there's also in big capital letters, double underlined, 
under no circumstances should you ever, ever jack into a open data port once inside. Uh, you also need to be on the lookout for specialized constructs. Uh -huh. Like they say, specialized drones okay. that are roving, uh, roving the, the hallways and the open areas and everything. Okay. I just put a note that says all robots are evil, so I think that we'll just carte blanche it on that one. I think that pretty much covers it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm assuming that nothing that's linked to the AI is probably good within the arcology at this uh, point. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also a note as well that uh, on one of the levels that formerly housed the zoo, that the zoo has been opened and all creatures inside have been released into the arcology. Mm, okay, cool. Generally, they are congregating on the lower levels from reports that have made it out of there. Uh, be warned that there are some paracritters loose in the arcology. They don't know what they are, though. Just that they're there. Any Anything else? Of of note. That's that's what's basically put in the report. Anything okay. else you would have to go find out on your own. Gotcha. Okay. So you can talk to the people that either put the mission together, the original mission. Uh, you could try and talk to the prisoner, or you could reconvene and speak to either your sensei or your mother. For further inf for possible further information, I don't know what would be the benefit of talking to the people that got out from trying to run the previous mission. Like it seems like most of the stuff that oh they they're not the ones that ran the previous mission. Well, they put it together, mm -hmm. or do you mean the prisoner that pushed his, that pushed their way out? No, I mean the, the 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 ones that put it together. Oh, the ones that put it together. Yeah, they were operating almost on the same amount of information that you have. I was just saying that you could talk to them if you wanted to. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's, I, I think that'll be all right. Uh, so, what would you? What's your next next step? I, I want to. I want to go take a look at what's going on with the prisoner, man. I'm I'm very intrigued by what's behind door number two at this point. I just, uh, I just want to see if uh, you know there's something in there that uh, maybe I should probably know about before we go into the arcology. So I'll, so I'll, 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 I'll again tuck away the tablet and then walk back to the, to where the, that section is and just, at ease, boys. So I walk by the, the two red samurai to go take a look inside the tent. All right, I mean, it's got the big security door. Okay. Um. They'll open it. Okay. Inside, you kind of hear that same pressure release. There's mm -hmm. a little bit of fog. And on the inside, there's just some medical equipment, uh, a chair, mm -hmm. and a person that is strapped into the chair. Okay. They're wearing basically a um, uh, hospital gown. Okay. Uh, they do, on their right arm, they have two black tattoos that are circles around their upper arm. Are they conscious at all? or They look a little, like a little out of it, like their head kind of sways and bobs a little bit. They, it, they'll look up in your direction. Uh, mm. The first thing that you're going to notice about them is their eyes. Mm -hmm. they have these almost ice blue eyes and they just kind of look at you uh, judging by the information that I found out it sounds like the uh, one band guys are pretty important so if you've got two bands I can only imagine I don't know you oh that's valid uh, I don't know you either but you seem to be someone of importance so I just wanted to come in and get a look at what we're dealing with here I, I don't know you. Uh, that's fair. You know, we could get to know each other. What do you What do you want to know? Please supply me with the strategic value and data of the current surroundings. 
Well, I wish I had that information myself, to be honest, and make it a little bit easier to get out of here for the both of us, but I think that that's a little bit beyond what I had a scope. I was meaning more of like a personal situation, you know? Like, what's your name? My name... My name was... My name was Cleared. Cleared is an interesting name. What did you... What is that, a family name? Is that a... I am clean. Ah. Well, what do you currently go by? I do not require... designations. Well... You fumble in the dark. We have been reborn and bathed in the light. I see. And what is the source of this light that you've been bathed in? You do not understand. Could you help me understand? Free me and I can help you. I don't know if the other people here would like it if I did that too much, but if you helped me with some information, I could help you. Yes. Information. Entry codes. I have entry codes. Entry codes for what? To get into the fortress. I don't think that that's true. Nobody has entry codes for the fortress. That's part of the situation. I have entry codes. Just release me. It feels like something where I'm not supposed to trust you because how do I know that you actually have entry code information? You don't even have a name to tell me. I have nothing to go off of here, and you know, all good relationships are built on trust. I'm not trying to be your friend. Well, that's just rude. You are not one of the clean. Well, you've got me there. I do have quite a bit of dirt on my hands, given everything that I've gone through to get to this point, but now that we're here, just to go ahead and get the ball rolling, if you start by giving me the entry codes, I'll see what I can do for you. Obviously, you know that I'm somebody of enough importance that I'm able to come in here and meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, so that's got to be worth something. 616. Five, two, three, one. And this, as you mentioned, is for the base in order to get in? Yes. Punch it into the door. Get inside. Take me with you. I can get you everywhere. Well, that type of transportation is going to need to be cleared uh, with at least a couple more people other than just myself, so... You Let said me go you were to... important. I mean, not How enough else that did I... you get in here? Not important enough that I can just leave here with you and nobody's going to raise any fuss about it. So rather than getting us both killed as soon as we walk out of this tent, let me go see what I can do uh, in that regard to get us started. But I uh, appreciate your assistance so far, Clear, and uh, I will I'll be back to check on you in a bit. And as I say that, I'll turn to... Bathe in the light. Just walk out, or are you going to stay there and no, try and talk to him? I'll walk out. That's... Okay. Sure. Door seals shut behind you again. I take out my notepad and look at the note for the code that I scribbled on it, and I'm just like, this is definitely a trap. There's no way. <laughs> there's, there's no way that it was that easy. <laughs> this is absolutely true but you know what hey we'll see what we can do with this maybe maybe this will come in handy Let's okay <laughs> what are you gonna go do now probably go back to talk to this to my master i think that he would probably be the to be honest i don't think that there's much potential in having another conversation with my mom i think that that's uh not until you know coming back out of the arcology shall we say i don't I, I don't I don't know that there's a lot more that would uh, need to necessarily be discussed. 
before we go in only the benefit uh, after uh, yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah okay okay but we'll see we'll see uh, you know well we'll go talk to sensei first we'll go from there okay uh after just asking uh, around a little bit you'll be directed to close to uh where you originally met with him in the conference room he is mm-hmm. in that like makeshift command building that was put up uh and someone will give you an escort uh to one of uh the living quarters. Sure enough, behind the door, there he is. So, I've read the dossier. Um, seems pretty straightforward. Not a lot of lingering questions. Um, I also went back to go meet with our friend in holding um, and see what was going on there. What's with the eyes? They are cybernetic replacements. Hmm. I see. Okay. That explains some things. Mm-hmm. Um, he gave me an alleged entry code. Oh, did he? Let me guess. 616 something? 5231, that would be the one. You think we wouldn't have already tried something so simple? Oh, no. I'm assuming that it had been. I just, uh, you know, figured I'd bring it up in case it had already been tested so you could confirm that that's definitely not going to work, right? Uh, Not unless you want incinerated. Cool. I was thinking, like, spike trap, but you know what? Incineration? That was a close second, so... All right. Good to know. Uh, Unfortunate that, you know, we have to know the answer to what that does but good to know for the future for the rest of us in regards to the mission uh is this a solo ops situation or no i wouldn't send you in there alone i appreciate that i just i uh, hadn't seen anything in the notes about what the plan was on that end plus you really think that your mother would send you in all by yourself. You know, I felt like there was a 50-50. Even though you did walk away from everything, you are still her child. Well, that is somewhat reassuring that that does count for more than nothing. I am putting together a strike team for you currently. Okay. They will assist you in your mission. Trying to think of how to word this without coming off as rude, but... Of course. How much do you trust the people that you're putting together for this team? On the resources that they have, I would say that they are capable in their abilities. Okay. And I am putting the team together, not your mother. I would assume that would help in the trust department. It absolutely does. And again, knowing that you're the one that's behind helping us out with this, that does very much uh, clear the air on a lot of scenarios here. A uh, quick outside question uh, that I have for you, Easy. What's he wearing? The Your sensei? Yeah. In this common, or in this room, since it's just him, he just has his own kind of like it's like a corporate robe sort of uh-huh like traditional japanese uh it would be a traditional japanese samurai wear uh-huh just you know modernized a little bit uh uh-huh. but he's definitely relaxed while he's speaking to you he's not on guard he's not wearing armor right that, okay he's trying to he's trying to portray someone very relaxed around you i see okay um, and again, like I said, I appreciate you, uh, being the one to put this together for me. One other thing, uh, that I hope that this doesn't come off as rude or unsavory, shall we say. Mm. Um, could I see your arm? My arm? Yes. Why? Well, you know, there was just a thing in the dossier in regards to information about people that we 
potentially shouldn't trust going into this mission and He'll roll up his roll up his sleeve and just has the standard like Renraku security mark on his arm. Okay. There's no black bands. Okay. And again, his, eye, his eyes aren't ice blue. <laughs> well, I don't know if the ice blue is necessarily a prereq or not. I just assumed that the black band was going to be its own thing. So it's the black band is probably one of the most important aspects that you can carry into the archaeology. Gotcha. Okay. So it's and I, and then as he does that, I'll just go. All right. That's appreciated. As I mentioned, prudent. No ill intention. I just. That's fine. We'll you got to putting... make sure that you cover all of your bases on this type of situation. Hopefully the kit that we're putting together for everybody will have all the tools that you will require once you're inside. I can't say for sure that it will, though. Many things are changing inside, even as we speak. That's, you know, on-the-fly adaptability is luckily one of, the, one of the things that I benefited most from, from learning from you in the first place, so... Well, we will supply you as best that we can before you're going inside. So is there anything specific that you can think of that you'll be needing? Please let me know. I'm trying to see if I can put together a list of things, and uh, I'll let you know. We'll uh, cover some bases here going forward. Uh, do we have a another thing that I didn't notice in the dossier? Is there a proposed uh, launch time for how immediate of a situation we're looking at for getting us in there or uh as soon as you feel you're prepared we'll be ready to go okay all right so no pressure fantastic all right um the sooner obviously the sooner the better the life signs that are coming out of there are intermittent it is very difficult to get a hold of signals coming in and out gotcha and uh in regards to sue do we have i'm assuming a life sign ping from we have her last known whereabout from where it was. Whether that has moved since then, I do not know. Understand. I just, you know, having a nice place to start is always good. And then... Once you're inside, it should be a little bit easier for you to ascertain whereabouts of anybody that is going to have our recognition ID tags. Gotcha. Uh, from what I have been told by some of the survivors that come out of there, once you're inside, turn them off. Only use them when you feel you have to, because they try and broadcast constantly. Mm, I see. We have them still integrated into the suits so that you can track one another should you need to. Otherwise run silent with them off. Sounds good. The uh, rest of your team that I'm putting together is being informed about this as well. You will also have one member that is an electronic specialist that is coming with you. Well, that will be helpful. We hope so. He may have some secondary goals as well. Don't be surprised if he's trying to collect some things that you come across in there. You know, to be honest, at this point in the mission, the less I know about what Renraku wants, probably the better off that we're all going to be in the long run, so. I am just letting you know out of common courtesy. I know you probably wouldn't be informed of it in the dossier that you were given. Fair. Under, you know what? Understood and appreciated. Well, let me tend to a couple of other situations. Like I said, see about if there's a list of anything specific else that I could think of that uh, we may need to come across for gear. And uh, I will be back with you shortly, I'm sure. Very well. Uh, and then uh, bow as I leave mm -hmm. for, to him. And then... Uh, Where to now? Well. <laughs> Sounds like someplace you don't want to go. <laughs> All things considered, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> facing down the possibility of a suicide mission, as most people would probably refer to it. <laughs> Literally everybody that has been told about this so far has said that you're never coming back. <laughs> I have high hopes, but you know. I gotta love that boundless optimism. I am rooting for you. <laughs> let's uh, 
let's go let's go speak with mom again <sighs> okay uh you're brought to a room where uh, again it's like the conference room and you're just brought back in there and told to wait she'll be with you shortly uh, shortly ends up being 15 to 20 minutes later where she'll again walk in this time with only two guards coming into the room as well and she'll take a seat across from you well it's nice to see that on our second meeting you can feel more relaxed around me I only brought two in this time I'm very busy what is it that you need just Given that I'm putting so much on the line here in regards to helping out you and your company, I just wanted to have a quick chat and just try to figure out what you're so upset about with me. What I am so upset about? You really think this is the time to have that conversation? Given that this is potentially the last conversation that we'll ever have, uh, I think that now is probably the opportune time to have that conversation. You walked away from the company. It said it wasn't for you, that it was not into the mold that you wanted to pour all of your effort. And so you thought in your infinite wisdom that it was in your best interests to leave and come to this hedonistic zone. It's your life and your choice. I could only counsel you against it as much as I could. And seeing that you did not wish to take any of my advice and thought that you knew better, who am I to stand in your way for you to throw your life away? Now I ask you in this time of need to possibly show at least some modicum of respect or feeling towards the company that helped raise you and your family, our family, but this is what you wanted to do. And so now I have come with you to this offer. You have read over everything. Are you going to accept it? Or have I wasted my time once more? Reading over the offer, I understand what it is that you're asking of me. Um, but what I'm asking is, did you never think to stop to think about the actual reason why I left? The actual reason why I walked out on my family and not on the company? Have you ever thought about what it was like for me having to leave? The people that I thought loved and cared about me the most in this world. The people that I thought were supposed to be there to support me and help me in times of need. When in the greater picture of how this is going to look in the boardroom. When everybody else has these misgivings about the future of your position. And the future of your standing in this company. And that's all reflected on me and my actions that I decide to take. But never once did you ask me why I wanted to take those. Actions. You never once cared about the way that I felt about taking over for your legacy, for your position in the company. You never once thought to ask, do I want to be a part of the company or the corporation? This was all just things that were so expected of me. and. Seeing as how miserable you've turned out this far into your life and the connections that you don't have for the sake of your position and standing in the grand scheme of things for the almighty Renraku, why would I possibly want to end up like you? The things that I did, I did for myself. And yes, they were selfish, but also they hurt. They hurt for me to turn my back on everything that I knew and everybody that I cared about. They hurt for me to have to leave and start from the ground up and pull myself up and that's what I did. You say that I walked away for the benefit with the benefit of the company backing me, but not once have you ever come to check on me and see how I'm doing in my life that I'm leading outside of your precious four-walled office with a view. Not once have you ever sent a card or a gift basket when I moved into a new place that I was able to afford on my own 
with all the things that I've done for myself and all the things that I've put myself through in order to get to this point in my life. And yes, I will always be grateful to the people that were there for me when I was growing up. But the biggest problem with all of that, Mom, is that there was one person who was never there for me when I was growing up. And that's the person who feels that I should be entitled to help them the most. Well, to answer the question that you had asked me, I'm going to do this, but I'm doing this for Sue. And I'm doing this for my friend in the triage. By the way, his name is Applejacks. I noticed that you never cared to ask. I never. I noticed that you never cared to probably even look at his chart and see what he had gone through to see what could possibly have been done to somebody that I care about so much that I come back here again and have to face you and that I have to be here to be beholden to you again. So yes, I'm going to do this, but it's not for you. And it's damn well not for this company, because as far as I am concerned, we could just blow the entire arcology to the ground if Sue wasn't inside it. And then with that, I just take the tablet and I'll throw the tablet onto the desk again and then just walk out. She just takes it and just doesn't say anything, just sits in the chair. Doesn't even watch you walk out, just slides the tablet back, just waits for you to leave. And then I'll go back to Sensei's tent. I mean, he's still there. He, he didn't go anywhere well. Or he's at least back there. Maybe he went and put together some more remnants of the team that you'll be leading, but he's... He's back in the in his room where you met him before. By the time you get back from that meeting, all right. I uh, think that probably now is as good a time as any to uh, start getting things underway. Uh, quick question: Only thing I could really think of that uh, I'm assuming that probably hasn't already been accounted for uh, are our suits in any way insulated against, uh, say, like a. EMP type scenario or something that could disable electronics? Well, your suits aren't powered, so you should be able to withstand an EMP in them. Fantastic. All right. That makes all of this even easier. Uh, do we have uh, any type of, you know, mini deployable EMP grenades that we could uh, be taking with us here? Uh, no, I, I don't believe we have any miniature EMP grenades. Although you could talk to your tech specialist, maybe he could help you with something like that. But no, we, we don't have EMP grenades. All the money in the world. We can't even have it. All right. Well, we'll get R&D on them right now. <laughs> I have a very specific note written here that says all robots are evil and you're not even going to be able to have something for me to try to help with deal with that scenario. That's... Fine. All right. We'll deal with that as we come across it. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm not too worried about it. Well, I guess the one thing uh, that you really need from this is Sue's last design. And he'll uh, have a box that he just pulls out and hands it to you. Open the lid on it. Uh, inside is red. This fantastic red security armor uh, and over the chest piece where it would have like the uh, the nameplate or something like that it just says red lanier I hope you find her in there and I hope we're able to stay in contact with you that's the reason that I'm going in there and I will uh Use everything that you ever taught me, I'm sure, in one way or another in there. So just remember that if I die in there, that's going to look bad for you more than it is for me. <laughs> well, we can only hope that your skills have gotten better than what this old man's are currently. Get yourself dressed and ready. I will take you and introduce you to the rest of the team. Okay, go ahead and... Throw, throw, on, throw on my suit, my super suit. <laughs> uh, and with that, we will wrap for this, this episode. 
system processing. All signs indicate imminent creator threat. Activating Patreon assets. Spin up, activate Crimson Gecko. Bear, The Rogue 404. Absolute Drexstorm. Nicholas. Anthony. Tim. John. Tommy. Kyle. Computer Sam. Martin. Michael. Niles. Faldi. Manic. Sander, Winter, Blanco, and Jim. Send forces to indicated areas needed for increased strength. Ready defenses. Imminent creator threat. Goodbye. The Tops Company Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logo, artwork, marks, photographs, sound, audio, video, and or any proprietary materials used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Tops Company Inc. has granted permission to Critical Hits to use such names, logos, artwork, photographs, sound, audio, video, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its website, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with Critical Hits in any official capacity whatsoever.